Check out the perks I've got over on Patreon, and a big thank you to the patrons who allow this video to happen, including the big patron of the month, the Nerd Therapist. Hey, Pokemon Masters, Berkey Patovi here, and this video is one that was entirely recommended by one of you. So I last breakdown, left a comment on a video months ago, I took a screenshot, whenever someone tweets me a video idea or sends me a, sends me a comment and they've got an idea for a video, I always screenshot it so I can credit the right person. I really appreciate it, sometimes it's hard coming up with the video's ideas, but this idea in particular I thought was really interesting. And the idea, the premise for the video is this. Pokemon that shouldn't be in their regional Pokedexes. For example, Beldum. The only way you can get one in Hoenn is it's given to you by Steven. And that is actually a really good point. Beldum, you can find it in the wild in other regions, but you cannot find it in Hoenn. And coming to think of it, I've always wondered, and I do have a plan to bring together a Pokedex uh, where it's like evolutionary order, but how can Elekid be a Johto Pokemon, Electabuzz be a Kanto Pokemon, and Electivire be a Sinnoh Pokemon? Is it like they can only evolve into these forms in these regions? Is it based on where they're first discovered? I feel like that's a slightly different topic for a later time, but at the moment I just want to address the Pokemon that are definitely not part of their native Pokedexes, and of course you can let me know other thoughts and all that in the comments. Thank you so much for your video ideas, keep them coming, massively appreciative, and uh, yeah, here we go with the video. I say that, we're actually, we're already into the video, now I'm just wasting up valuable video time. Thanks for watching, you're nice. So we're gonna go region by region, and with Kanto it's actually really really hard. The best way to do this is I went to Cerebi.net and I was going into the games and looking at uh, like game exclusive Pokemon, gift Pokemon, Pokemon that you can only find one of. And for this whole thing, I'm gonna exempt legendary Pokemon because legendary and mythicals, they're, they're rare. They're supposed to be rare. They're supposed to be one ofs or two ofs or very few ofs. So we're ignoring them. We're also gonna ignore fossil Pokemon because they are restored to life from ancient Pokemon that probably did live in that region, but they're rare because you don't find them a lot there anymore. Although fossils like the Helix and Dome fossil that I found in Mount Moon are actually more common in other regions. You can find them all in the uh, the fossil cave that's in Kalos, that's the name I've forgotten. Or in the underground of Sinnoh, you can find those fossils in Platinum. So uh, yeah, you can actually find those fossils more commonly in other regions. But the rarest Pokemon of the region absolutely are Eevee, Hitmonchan, Hitmontop, and Lapras. Uh, Snorlax too, you can only find two Snorlax in the wild. However, Let's Go has kind of changed the game on this a little bit. Because Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee has every Pokemon even spawning in the wild, including starter Pokemon. Oh yeah, uh, starter Pokemon are also exempt from this list, but um, with Eevee you can find it in the wild now. Snorlax and Lapras, they're rare spawns. Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, also rare spawns. So I actually couldn't really find one of these in Kanto. So to get onto, like again, more Pokemon actually relevant to this topic, we have to move to the Johto region. And the first big thing we find here are baby Pokemon, like Togepi. You can find baby Pokemon in the wild, but generally speaking, the only place that you're going to get baby Pokemon is through eggs, and these were first introduced in Johto. Does that make many of the baby Pokemon Johto exclusive? Uh, I think so. I think when it comes to things like Magby and Elekid and Togepi, it's like these Pokemon were first hatched in Johto. And that's because I kind of believe baby Pokemon, actually I don't think Togepi, is Togepi, a, is Togepi a baby Pokemon or a basic Pokemon? I actually think it's a basic Pokemon, but when it comes to baby Pokemon like Magby, Alakid, and Smoochum, I'm gonna say that they were first hatched in this region, and that's because I believe baby Pokemon to kind of be like, almost like specially bred. They don't tend to do well in the wild, apart from a few very specific locations in the Pokemon world. So baby Pokemon, again, are a bad example of what we're talking about. They're not like Beldum, but I'll tell you who is a good example, Pseudo Wudo. There we go, we finally got to the point. There are other gift Pokemon, like Shuckle, for example, but Shuckle, you can find it via Rock Smash. It is more common in Kalos and Unova. But Pseudo Wudo, you can only find one in the whole of Johto. I'll tell you where you can find them. Sinnoh, Unova, Kalos, Alola. You can find Pseudo Wudo all over the place, but you cannot find them very much in Johto. My only explanation for this is that maybe they used to be more common in Johto, or maybe they had to migrate out for some reason. Too many people with squirt bottles. But uh, yeah, Pseudo Wudo is as common in Johto as it is in the Battle Frontier from the Sebi Islands, so really it shouldn't be a Johto Pokemon. And this is the first one that I'm officially saying on this list, absolutely is shouldn't be where it is on the Pokedex. Moving over to Hoenn, we do have Beldum. Beldum, I actually believe they came from space. I've done theories and videos about that before, but Beldum, uh, most likely, because it falls with meteorites, and meteorological activity is something that Hoenn is known for, but it's also known in Alola, where on the mountain with the observatory, you can find a lot of Beldum, the same place you can find Minior. It's a place very high up in the sky and thus prone 
to these meteorite showers. It's the second tallest mountain in all of the Alola region, and it is constantly getting bombarded by meteorite showers, and thus you get Pokemon like Minior and like Beldum there. So Minior, much more common to Alola, and it's also very common in the wilds of Sinnoh, it is not common in Hoenn. I can only assume that one lone Beldum falls down there every so often and Steven got hold of one to give you, but primarily, uh, maybe Beldum was first discovered falling from the sky in Hoenn and that's why it's part of the Hoenn decks. The other Pokemon of Hoenn that is a weird one is Cast Form. Cast Form was created in the Hoenn region, which makes sense why it's part of the Hoenn decks in the Weather Institute, but you can find loads of them in the wild in Yanova and again, Alola. So again, not really native to Hoenn. When it comes to Sinnoh, a few Pokemon popped up on my radar, one of them being Spiritomb. Spiritomb, it, uh, okay, there's only one of it, or two of it, in all of, uh, in all of the Sinnoh region, but it's also super rare everywhere in the Pokemon world. It's actually possibly one of the rarest Pokemon. So given that it's as rare everywhere as Spiritomb, I'm definitely saying that that is, that is still native to Sinnoh. With evolutions, like anything like Electivire and Magmortar, I don't really know. I know with a lot of the Pokemon that are evolutions of previous Pokemon that are in the Sinnoh region, they evolve as a result of specific moves and criteria being hit, like stones being used, uh, special trade items being held. Perhaps people only discovered how to evolve these Pokemon in the Sinnoh region, and that's why that they are Sinnoh native. People discovered how to evolve them there. Rotom is one of those Pokemon that is extremely rare. It's, it is extremely rare everywhere, but you can find them in Unova and Kalos. So I'm going to say that unless Rotom was once way, way more common in Sinnoh, it should actually be a Pokemon from those regions. And the other big one is Riolu and Lucario. Now, Riolu is a baby Pokemon, but it's one of those few baby Pokemon that can be found in the wild, again, in Yanova, and actually in Alola. And Lucario can only be found uh, in Alola on the Pony Gauntlet. But these Pokemon, not Sinnoh Pokemon. They should not be native to Sinnoh. You cannot find them in, you can't find them in Iron Island. You get gifted them by Riley. And I have no reasons as to why they would have once been potentially more common or what could have wiped them out. Just two regions left, and obviously with a lot of these Pokemon, they're rare in their first uh, introduction, and then they become more accessible later on down the line. Given that there's only two regions left here, there's fewer and fewer of these Pokemon. In Unova, the main evolutionary lines are Zorua and Zoroark, and Larvesta and Volcarona. These Pokemon are unbelievably rare. However, head on over to Alola, and you can find them on the first island. They're everywhere. So definitely these Pokemon should really be in the Alola decks, not in the Yanova decks. The only thing I can sort of think is that Volcarona is sort of worshipped like a legendary in Yanova. It's found in the Relic Castle and it's this big battle that you have to do. Maybe this status as a sort of almost legendary Pokemon allowed it to be part of the Yanova decks. As for Zoroark, uh, I don't really know about that. I think there might be some mythology around it, around the, uh, is it the Lost Thorn Forest? Special event area in the Unova region. So potentially due to that, its connection with N. I don't know why that would make it part of the Unova decks, but, but possibly? And then in Kalos, all we have is Sylveon, which is an evolution to Eevee. And again, like the Sinnoh evolutions, potentially people only discovered how to evolve Eevee into Sylveon in Kalos. In Alola, everything is actually really easily accessible. There is no difficult to get specific one-off Pokemon. There's the Ultra Beasts, like Pokemon like Poipol, for example, but you get those there from other dimensions. We already know where they're from. They shouldn't really even be part of the Alola decks. They should be part of like the Ultra Space decks. And like I say, legendary Pokemon are exempt. So this is just a fun little look at all the Pokemon that might fall under that category. Let me know if I've missed any. As for my explanations, uh, as I say, some of them might have used to have been more common in the regions that they're supposedly native to. Uh, some of them may have only been discovered for the first time in those regions, and maybe that's why they end up in part of those regional dexes. I really want to make a new national dex that compiles Pokemon by their evolutionary lines, but I feel like doing it by having all the legends in one place, all the starters in one, all the birds, all the fossils blocked up is going to look quite ugly. So that's something I'm thinking about doing, maybe for a future video. I don't know how I'd arrange that, but uh, anyway, this is just a fun little deep dive into a topic that I thought was particularly interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and of course, saw hi Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master.